<laughs> That's right. Sit there without speaking, bitch. Just like I like it. So get a broom and sweep up some of that shit over there, especially on the Silvio. Right? The Silvio's a American nasty fuck. Bitch. You see that? What's the bet? 800. You watching me all fucking night. Yeah, he didn't study this hard in school. John, please. The best <laughs> he didn't study this hard. God damn, these dudes are talking shit, boy. They are talking you shit, man. Mind. Jesus, do you ever shut the fuck up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he getting fucking irritable as fuck, man. Irritable as fuck. What the He's fuck are you get... doing? Chill. Take it easy. I'm losing my balls over here. This fucking moron's playing Hazel. Get the fuck out of here. I was just trying to sweep the cheese away. From Why? You. Why now? Leave it there. I don't know. I was just... What? Are you still talking? Where do you get these fucking idiots, huh? Where do you get them? He's on the street with the cheese. I'm trying to get... The... Leave the fucking cheese there, all right? I love fucking cheese at my feet. I stick motherfucking pepperoni <laughs> in my socks tonight. <laughs> so they smell like your sister's ass. All right? So leave the fucking cock-sucking cheese where it is. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ, dude. Yeah, go ahead. God okay, damn, man. Tony sent him on a mission just sits back and laughs. Because he knew. He, he knew. He knew the reaction he would get. I just realized that. Jesus. What a dick. I don't really understand poker, to be honest with you. Checking and all this shit. Like, I don't fucking. I never did it. I like games of chance. I don't like games where you have to play the other players, man. Three beautiful kings. Blackjack, for instance. That's my, that's my jam. I'm so pissed in the morning. You look pissed. Arthur just called me and told me Rachel Weiss got an early acceptance to Wesleyan. And you didn't expect it? No. Is she talking about Rachel Weiss, the actress? Please, I'm blacker than her mother. Yeah, well. No, that must be, she must be just using a random name. Maybe Rachel Weiss wasn't big yet. Hold on, see if they want to close the lights. Yeah, these motherfuckers are tired as fuck, boy. How much is he into us for? About 45 bucks is this evening. Jesus Christ. Oh, Grab another 10 while you were asleep. He said you were okay. Right, low card Holy shit. Look at this fucking lineup. Oh, he's going to be bad, boy. <laughs> he's going to be really fucking mad. Oh, Johnny Sack. He must have free tokens at the tunnel. I just expect to make a dime with this fucking stonewaller. Yeah, he's going to turn around and see it, and this is going to be ugly. Look at you guys head down and shit. Same as you, to the front door. Hi, Rich. Hi, Rich. You want some locks? Get some nice fresh locks. Got some fucking balls, you know that? I do. I just stab you in the fucking eye. He is one crazy motherfucker, boy. Hey, come on, Rich. Get your hand off for me. I'll put one in your head. Don't Boy, me, Rich. you need to be put down me. like a rabbit dog. I, I would love to. <laughs> Could these two fight to death? And I mean, both their death. Don't make me fucking embarrass you. That's Frank Sinatra Jr. out there, motherfucker. I'll be right back. That's it. Cash me up. Oh, come on, Frank. Doc. Sit yep, Frank Jr. is out of here, man. He don't want to witness anything, man. Tony, you I'm can't be witnessing shit. Good luck with your next game. I'll give my regards to your uncle. Well, let me get you a little breakfast. Come on. Nah, not really. I, I got tickets for the Rihanna Cyrus. Oh, Tony's going to be pissed oh, about yeah. this shit. No, Tony. I'm getting sick of this whole new dollar. He's going to beat you know, like a know, fucking really. dog, bitch. Well, if anybody wants to make a move. <laughs> you better back down, bitch. This is happening, man. Then you're going to get the fuck up and you're going to go get my $45,000. Jesus. No problem. Listen, Tony, I had a good run there for a while. He did, man. We saw him win a hand, you know. He won a hand. He's got a fucking problem, man. You never told me how you... Like I'm saying, like, when you know, when you just keep button heads with somebody and you know it's inevitable, there's nothing you can build. Like, you're in a situation where, like, you're on the same block or you work at the same business or whatever. Like, you're just going to keep button heads. There's no resolution. You, you can't stand each other. Just fucking get it over with, man. Like, they're going to drag this shit out until the end of the fucking season, man. They might as well do it now. I noticed that bitch keeps fucking backing down from Tony, but sooner or later he's going to make a move. And I'm there for it.
Trying to get some sleep. I've been working all night. How you doing, Eric? Pretty good. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> Are you awake now? Yeah. Good. Close the door. Thanks. <laughs> you like the store? Yeah. I mean, she apparently is not on this series Vampire anymore. Clark. She got no plot lines. Vampire nothing. Died. Very little screen time. The guy's here almost every Christmas Eve. You don't ask? Somebody says Joe Blow died. No more people ask how. What happened? <laughs> you ain't getting nothing, dude. <laughs> it's because the wind comes. Knocks him off the roof. Go for a satellite dish. It's very sad. You know what I mean? Like, they'll, they'll do the... I mentioned this before. The therapy session. They'll have a scene that's unresolved. There's information we don't know, or you know, that action has to be taken, like when his mom got sick. Then they cut to this, and he explains what happened in the time period that would have taken five minutes of screen time, right? Is it permissible now? Is it enough of a sad tragedy that you can join? See, the rest this is why I don't like her as a character. She brings her shit into the therapy session. You can't do that, man. Be a professional. She takes offense to shit. He says it's not about her, man. It's not about her itty bitty feelings. Somebody building a bridge, you don't want them bringing their personal shit to the bridge building, do you? The bridge is going to fucking fall down, and people are going to die. Same thing with therapy. You don't want a doctor or a brain surgeon bringing their personal shit. They're mad at somebody. You don't want them bringing that shit to the, the operating table, do you? So the therapist can't bring their personal shit into the fucking therapy session. Time to talk to this bitch. The fuck is your name? I guess we're going to have to look it up, man. I was hoping he wouldn't be around longer for me to have to learn his fucking name. I don't think you can smoke in here. He don't give a shit. Who's gonna complain? Huh? Him? Hey, you mind? <laughs> you dick. Sorry about blowing up in your game. You should be, motherfucker. I don't do something. How's it gonna look? That's a good excuse, by the way. That's something a, a fucking asshole like him can respect. You know, if I don't do something, how's it gonna look? He can respect that shit. Wait, you're just going to throw this miserable bitch in my face with no fucking warning, man? I was taking a drink. God damn, man. My father was the Tony's physician. He gave Romeo Mars $50,000 he got out of the She's an instigating little bitch, man. I hey, fucked up, okay? I'm going to make it all work out somehow, I swear. Jesus Christ. Do? Sell a store. Pat, I wouldn't do anything to insult you. Our kids go to the same school together. <laughs> Tony, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just having some bad luck. Just got worse. It's so weird to see this actor play this kind of character. There's mud all over the doors. I warned you. I warned you, Eric. I warned you. This is really shitty, man. Blame the kid. This is Eric's Jeep. Oh, my God. Is this Eric Scatino's Jeep? Yeah, but yours now. His dad sold it to you? Yeah, no. Something like that. <laughs> Why do you have to say it that way? He said it that way for us audience, man. We know, right? We didn't need him to tell us. He could have said, yeah. Like, he didn't need to say something like that. So take that high moral ground and go sleep in a fucking bus station if you want. Jesus Christ, Tony. <laughs> He's what an asshole. <laughs> See you next episode, Camilla. I guess. You know. Oh, Jesus. Where? A few rows back. He knew. He fucking knew. All she had to say was that Jesus, he knew. See, that's the marriage dialogue, right? <laughs> that's right. Sit there without speaking, bitch. Just like I like it. You know what, Meadow? Fuck you. Fuck your gangster father. Jesus. And fuck this. Holy shit. Kid's going through it, man. He's getting off easy, though. You don't want to see your your son date a fucking uh, gangster daughter. You don't date the president's daughter, and you don't date a gangster daughter. You just don't do that shit, Please man. remember to turn off those pages and cell phones. You're worried about coffee? The fuck is a pager? <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. Miss Soprano will perform a solo. Singing My Heart Will Go On, the theme song from Titanic. Good God, Enjoy that sounds show. awful. That was interesting. Um, 
heartbreaking, but like I said, you can see it come from my way. Um, actually, I thought that dude ended up dead, so he made out, right? Maybe this will be a continuing plot line. I kind of doubt it. I think it's probably just a one-shot, a little snapshot. You know. But here's the thing. You know, and this is obviously gangster stories, but it applies to other, you know, it's a metaphor for life, right? You know, they take shit to a certain extreme, but like, you know, people have family problems no matter what their walk of life is, no matter what kind of business they're in, they have family problems. So that's why this is so relatable. This takes it to an entertaining extreme, but it still applies, right? So what I'm saying is uh, the Terminator had a friendship and he had a certain relationship with Tony Soprano. And then he went into Tony Soprano's world and that changed the relationship forever. And the key moment in that that transition was when he asked Tony about whether his daughter got into the fucking college. Earlier in the episode, that would have been a very friendly conversation. But when he asked that, Tony didn't even fucking answer him because the relationship had changed permanently because he went into Tony's world. That applies to a lot of things. Imagine you're friends with a cop and everything's cool. You have a very friendly relationship, but then the cop catches you drinking, driving. You know, the relationship has changed forever. You know, like, because now you've entered the cop's world. Or you're friends with a, a district attorney, you know. Or you're friends with a uh, physical therapist. You know, so, like, you know, you, when you enter somebody's professional world, and you've only seen them one way their, your entire relationship with them, and then you enter their world, you're going to see a different side to them. Now, it may not always be the same. Like, you know, I made it adversarial when I was talking about cops or district attorneys, right? But it may not, and it doesn't necessarily have to be adversarial. It could be you just enter the world. They're going to see you a different way. You're going to see them a different way. I find that interesting. And the second thought I had about this was, Tony, now, you know, you know, there's a certain kind of person. You don't want them to see you as a victim or as prey. You know what I mean? Prey is with an E, right? You don't want them to see you as prey. As long as they don't see you as prey, you can have a very nice relationship with them. And this is, again, I keep talking about bullies because, you know, I had... I never really got bullied in school, but I've, I've talked many times. That's because I would fight back. The key part about that is if a bully doesn't see you as prey, they're going to have, they're going to be, you're going to be fine with them. They'll basically leave you alone. Maybe you can joke around with them, not be friends, but be friendly with them. If they don't see you as prey, if they ever see you as prey, that relationship changes forever. Tony saw him as prey because he owed Tony money. Even if he had bucket dropped a check for $45,000 right then and there, the first time it was asked. It wouldn't have mattered. Like, you know, the relationship with Chase Forever, Tony would always see him as prey, you know? It's, just, it's, it's sad, you know, it is. But it's also very interesting, you know? Uh, I hadn't really thought about this. this. show is deep, man. It brings up a lot of deep questions, shit. Whew. Well, on to the next one.